towards the end, in the last uh, five minutes, we're going to talk about the event coming up. So first, I mean, we really want to highlight NCSA. All right. So, um, so anyway, I usually wait until somebody pops on and starts watching before I start doing the intro. Do you see the counter up in the corner? No. No, you don't. I see a counter. I have I have how long we've been live and how many people are watching. But anyway, yeah. let's let's just go without any viewers at this time. So anyway, hi, I'm Bill Patton, and I am here talking with Heather Shelby Gage, and we're getting ready for a big event, but we're also here to solve some big problems because one of the big problems that people complain about a lot, and they almost have no solutions to it, is the problem of not enough Americans playing American college tennis. So we're going to help solve that problem in part today. And then you know, the other part of that problem is kids who have every ability to play college tennis, but they just don't because they're misguided, they're misinformed, they're just kind of lazy in their thinking or what they just didn't think about it enough. They didn't realize it would be an incredible experience. So they just missed out. And what a shame that is. All right. So uh, Heather, tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, sure. Hi, I am Heather Gage. Um, so my background is tennis. I grew up playing in Southern California as a nationally ranked junior and ended up choosing to go to the Air Force Academy. Uh, so I played Division One tennis. I also coached there. I've also coached at the Division. So I've coached there at Division One. also coached at the Division Three level, another school. Um, and I've been in coaching for a very long time, um, 20 plus years now. And I coach high school tennis <coughs> boys and girls. Um, so it's been a lot of experience with that. But um, I am extremely passionate about college sports. So my path to my school of choice was not the usual one. It wasn't, oh, I wanted to didn't grow up dreaming of going to the Air Force Academy. It was the recruiting process that brought me there. Um, and so I like to share that story a lot, um, a little bit more in depth with some of my athletes I work more closely with, because to me, being active and engaged in the recruiting process can open your eyes to what is a really good fit for you for that next step in your life. And that's really how I ended up with the company I'm with now, which is um, NCSA, Next College Student Athlete. Um, and I work there. I work with um, really close with our tennis families. I'm a recruiting coach manager. So I work with a lot of other sports as well. Um, but mostly we're there to help athletes take their sport to that next level and set them up for their future, um, not just in their sport, but just in life. So that's all right. Very example. good. And in the in the description here, I'm going to send that link for that sign up form that you that you sent me. But sure. if if so, somehow people don't see that, can they go to what's what's the website that they could go to to uh, just get information like sign up for a newsletter or whatever? Um, you can go to ncsasports.org, um, okay. check that out. I'm happy to field any questions. If anyone wants to reach out directly to me, I'll make sure regardless of sport, I'll make sure they are in touch with an expert on that side of things and get them moving. Okay, terrific. All right, so let's get into a little bit about um, the problem of not enough Americans playing college tennis. And I'm not going to I don't want to look at it from the, the from the standpoint of how foreign players get recruited, because if more Americans start playing, then fewer Ameri fewer foreign players will be recruited. So, um, what what do you think is the number one key to helping an American kid realize for the first time that they can play college tennis? Um, I think realizing they could play college tennis, um, I think comes down to being around a coach of some form that sees that in them. Um, but also just educating themselves on what are the different options out there. Uh, most of the time, we're very familiar with the big name schools, you know, the big top D ones or schools that have big football programs or basketball or those revenue sports. And they bring in all this hype to that particular school. But there are so many schools out there that are 
that are offering a tremendous experience. And I think people may write themselves off. Um, oh, I can't play at that level. That you know, if they're looking at that Division One only as the only marker, uh, yeah. or they're not really informed that what can this do for my future going to maybe a smaller school or maybe a school in a different state or a different part of uh, the country and different ex environment altogether. Yeah, here's a funny one. So my daughter applied to five different schools in California, and Alabama. <laughs> you know? awesome. And so, and it was, and it was only because uh, she'd heard of it because of their national championship football school team, you know? So, but, but now here's an interesting thing. So yeah, in my area, there's this, there's this D one or bust, but then there's also the academic school of my dreams problem. So uh, parents and kids are obsessed with Cal, Stanford, UCLA, Right. And so, you know, that's they, they feel like they have to go there. They might settle for UC San Diego, maybe, you know, or um, that's but, you know, uh, my daughter went to Santa Barbara. It's the third best public school in California. Um, so. All right. Well, you know, but but the problem is they have this obsession with these certain schools. But what they don't realize is that MIT plays at Division three. Right. The Pomona Pitzer schools, which are amazing, are large, are division two and division three schools. So why is there so much resistance to doing anything but um, going to the academic school they think of their dreams and or the division one or bust thing? You know, I think a lot of it is just the culture that you're used to being around and what you've been hearing and what you're familiar with and where your friends signing. Um, there's a lot of social media influence, I imagine, as well. You know, every single day seeing senior year, you know, who's getting accepted where, um, you know, it, a lot of it is my reputation or what am I supposed to go do? Um, maybe it's coming from family pressure, but I think a lot of it also is pressure that, kids are putting on themselves. Uh, there's this expectation of, oh, well, I have to go to UCLA because that's the path that that everybody said I need to go down. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and not taking that chance to look outside the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I had a parent one time and we were discussing, you know, the, the possibility of her daughter, of his daughter playing college tennis. And he let me know that it was, you know, it was Cal or Stanford. Those were the only two real choices. But UCLA would be a fine, a fine alternative, right? But his daughter wanted to go to Whittier, right, where Richard Nixon went. And it's a, it's an amazing liberal arts school. So, so there was this big conflict. And I'm like, you know, you know, you, maybe you might want to listen to your daughter. So she, anyway, she goes there. And then he has his epiphany after she's gone there because it's a small school. She got noticed. She wasn't one among 40,000. She was a celebrated student at that school. And all of her professors knew her well enough to write amazing letters of recommendation. So to me, you know, finding a school that's actually a better fit is so much better. I mean, I've always appreciated smaller class sizes at the, at the college classes that I took. Um, I didn't like being in a lecture hall with 450 people because I mean, there's a zero, almost zero chance you're going to get to know your professor, but in those smaller classes, you go to, you, you know, you, you're part of the regular discussion at the class, um, blah, blah, blah. I, I, I don't want to go too deep into that now. So, um, so now what, uh, what kinds of things does, um, next college, Scott, wait, what is it again? Next college student athlete, NCSA. Next college student athlete. I've been saying it wrong for a long, long time, and you've never corrected me. All right. Well, anyway. I don't know that you have said it wrong. Well, <laughs> you haven't You haven't caught me. So I have not caught you. You have not caught me. There's it. a All lot right. of confusing letters. I guess. So it. what kinds of things, what kinds of support does your organization Whoa. offer the students so that they can make that connection? Yeah, so we offer, first and foremost, a really phenomenal platform. Um, I, I have not seen anything 
like it or better that we have tons of resources that go into this. We have an entire IT team and development team and we're a very big organization. And with that comes stuff like this great platform, which has search tools and um, organization tools. Athletes can go in regardless of their sports design. You know, you if you're a volleyball player, you're going to have the volleyball version, um, tennis player, tennis version, football, et cetera. But um, we've got this great map where you can go across the U.S., pick your state, pick your division level, pick your academic selectivity. Do you want to be in the suburbs? Do you want to be in a, in a city? You know, everything. What major are you looking to study? And then when you run that search, it's going to populate only schools that have your sport, which meet those criteria. Uh, That's we have awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. I wish I had it when I was going through the process. It's, I think it's right. a cool time. <laughs> well, and that solves a major problem because you might get recruited someplace and they might offer that as a major, but then you get there and it's terrible. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like, you know, you're, it's just, it's a very low rated uh, thing in that particular major. So then you're miserable because you're not happy with your academics. So yeah, then and then part of the pain, a big problem that people have is tr is having to transfer. So that's a great thing right there. One thing I used to do is steer people to their high school counselor because mm -hmm. because high school counselors have a program where you can select a school by what division do they play in? Do they have men's or women's tennis? Do they have this particular major? Right. Then you can do your research from that. Another right. thing I tell people to do is go on the NCAA website and look at who competed in last year's championships. Because do you want to be on a really good team or not? So right. here's, a, here's a very quick story. Um, the number one player at a Division II school that I was coaching at was threatening the coach that he was going to transfer because he didn't like how he was going to be treated. So the coach said, where are you going to go? El Paso? <laughs> Which is nothing against El Paso, except, you know, you have to like the desert and, and it's some parts of El Paso are not so nice, but there are some nice parts of El Paso. It's actually a very beautiful place to be if you like desert scenery. Okay. But anyway, but <laughs> it was the lowest ranked division one school. Right. And so the, the kind of like the snide comment was, well, you think you just, you really need to be D one, but what are your choices really at the D1 level? I mean, mm -hmm. where do you really want to be? So here in the Bay Area or El Paso. So, all right. So we're uh, we're very quickly getting towards the end here. But uh, what, is there more that you want to say about um, NCSA? Like, because that yeah. portal thing's amazing. What's another right. major? Yeah, yeah. A couple other things I'll note. Um, you know, it's not just researching schools, but personalizing the search where we have an algorithm be built in once you we have a video team. So once you get video up and edited, they do take care of that um, and you get all your rankings in. If you're a tennis player and whatever your sport is, put in those measurables, your grades in, you house your uh, transcripts and everything. Um, and you put in our system what preferences you have for a school. It's going to actually populate with different percentage matches. And that way you can discover schools that maybe you didn't think about that offer your major that you are the right level tennis player for in this example, um, that meet what you're looking for in a school and your grades are the right, the right range for. So it really helps the research side of it. From the kind of client facing side of things, we offer a ton of education, which I'm very, very passionate about. We do everything from recruiting specific classes on talking to coaches, visits, phone calls, um, eligibility to bringing in guest speakers like Bill, um, <laughs> hint, hint, um, and mental trainings. We do nutrition trainings. We do things. How on, often do those happen? All the time. Um, we've got. How many times a month? Yeah, sure. So we have our recruiting specific classes every week. Um, wow. And then we've got uh, webinars uh, twice a month minimum that we have a mental training and a nutrition training. We offer um, support and trainings from like SAT and ACT prep. We do stuff for the financial aid and we bring in speakers that can help and partners 
that will help navigate the scholarship side of things, yeah. whether it's athletic or- Here, let's <laughs> let's stop for a second. I just want to interject one thing. Here's one, one pro tip. One thing you might not realize is that while you're trying to get recruited, you might find a school where you're not a good fit, but that coach is a really nice person who has a friend who needs a player and they will send you to their friend, right? 100%, so, don't yeah, burn bridges, no. respond to emails, <laughs> yes. Yeah. I created I created a course with Dave Borelli, former head coach at USC and, um, and also, uh, wait, the set, uh, TCU, Texas Christian. Um, and he won seven national championships. And he, he tells some great stories about players who came to him. He couldn't help them, but he helped them get going. And then that player then returned and beat his team. And it was kind of a funny thing. They had a really, he enjoyed that. Helping somebody get going who just wasn't a fit for what he was doing at that time. But, you know, here's a national championship coach who's, who's paying attention to people and helping them out. Yeah. So, all right. So, uh, is anything more on NCSA? How um, often are the mental training things? Um, we've got usually two a month from different yeah. speakers. We bring in professionals. So, yeah, they're they're. Good. I, I'm really passionate about that side. The last really piece I'll highlight is our recruiting coach team. Um, we've got every one of us has experience playing. Comp uh, coaching at the college level, being part of recruiting journeys and helping hundreds to thousands of athletes a year of getting navigating that process and getting them on college rosters. So we're really hard behind the scenes, connecting with college coaches, helping guide our athletes. Um, you know, we work really closely with a lot of our athletes and helping them with next steps and every step in between. So, yes, that's awesome. I love and, that part of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think part of the problem is the inertia from people who are like, oh, yeah, I wish my kids could could play college tennis. But then you kind of have to reinvent the wheel every time for everyone. But if you get your kids connected to this, it's just the wheels already made. And, you know, it's a high performance wheel. You know, it's, absolutely. So that wheel rolls fast and efficient. So, um, is there a cost to it? Um, there is. There's great, different membership levels. Um, it's it's a fee that you pay one time, broken into payments if you'd like, and then you have access to us forever. So that's one of the benefits I like to highlight as well. Um, if you want to transfer, we're here to help. If you want to look for a um, graduate assistant program after you graduate and you want to stick around mm. next year, we help, you know, if you have questions, I just have one of my former player um, clients that I've worked closely with just finishing up his freshman year in a D1 program now texted me the other day, like, Hey, I'm looking for some um, things to do over the summer to stay, stay fit. Like you have any recommendations of where I should go train. You know, mm. So I, I love to keep up with my athletes. I love when they reach out or send updates on how the season's going and then they have questions. I'm here and help them out. And I can say from having spoken that it's really an outstanding group of young people and uh, the level of engagement is really high. And, you know, there are a few shining stars out there who ask the great questions or the hard questions. And it's really fun to be able to answer those because if, if one kid's thinking that, then, you know, in the audience of, you know, 180 live and then maybe up to 700 later, there are other people must be thinking that way. So I love answering questions. So let's, so anyway, so Monday, now what you want to do is you want to act on this. So the action item is get your players to sign up for this, like right now, because Monday we're going to have uh, an event. We're going to talk about uh, five different ways to enhance your ability to play in college tennis. So we'll talk a little bit about the recruiting game. Uh, one thing I'm going to talk about is learn to play really good doubles. Yes. So I'm going to get into some detail on that because, you know, if, if you have two players and they're equal, right in singles but the but the one of them is a superior doubles player oh they're gonna get the nod for sure because 
you know that even that one point at division one is so crucial and in some levels don't they play all three all three doubles matches count um yeah some of the some levels do Some levels all three double yeah. matches count and so you can make an uh, you know an insurmountable three zero lead, you know, if you if you win the doubles first, you know. So, um, so anyway, uh, now um, so we're so this is going to be Monday at uh, four p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Is that what we said? Seven o'clock your time. Five p.m. Pacific. Okay, five p.m. 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern. So you you can figure out what that means in your area, mm -hmm. right? But um, we would love to have you there. Is so? Did they have they have to sign up and then can kind of complete their membership before they can get in? Yeah. So it's offered to our members. Um, once they sign up, we'll just get them signed up for the class. They'll be good to go. Yep. So we're going to, we're going to talk about the top five things that you can do to make yourself more college ready. And it's going to be very practical, usable stuff. And you as a coach can use that also to empower your players to be thinking that way. Um, so uh, this will be my final comment and then we'll let you wrap up. So a, a couple of years ago, I went to a specialty course with Judy Murray. So that's Andy Murray's mom, for those of you that don't know. And she's also, or she is or was the director of coaching for Scotland. Um, and so she's an amazing, amazing coach. And one thing I love, she's coaching six and seven year olds. And she says, you know, you can volley like that, but you're not going to beat Rafa like volleying like that. <laughs> right. And then she would say, and then remember, this is tour training, right? And she's working with goofy six and seven year olds who, you know, barely even have any technique, but she was feeding the dream, right? She was giving them an early vision for you could be as good as you want to be. And this is something I do too. You know, I say, Hey, you know, um, Lucy and, and Kim, you know, you might have to take turns being number one in the world. Will that be okay? <laughs> Can you share? So, all right. So final thoughts. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would like to just end with if you are, whether you use a serve recruiting service or not to help you navigate the recruiting process, I would highly, highly, highly recommend really looking at all the different options, really exploring what possibility do you have to play? Because there is a spot for everyone in college tennis in particular, college sports, but the what can you get from playing a sport in college is so valuable and so much worth that do I play at the big name school that I've always thought I was going to go to or not play tennis or do I go play for a school that wants me to play for them? Um, you are going to learn leadership. You're going to learn teamwork. You're going to learn work ethic. You're going to learn time management. There is just a plethora of things that you will take away from your college sports experience that goes on a resume and makes you super recruitable afterwards, let alone the network of people that you will have following you for the rest of your life. So lots of pitch there for college sports. I am super pa passionate about it. It's not for everyone, but I think everyone should consider it. Awesome. So sign up now. Go to where? Go to, and uh, send, fill out that, that form that we put, that will put you right in touch with me. Okay. All right, very good. But you but they can go to NCSA Sports. Yes, yeah. very good. But then uh for your convenience, it's gonna be right down below, but not right now because I'm busy talking to you right now. <laughs> but um do that right now and you know get yourself on that letter, and then you know, then you can also send that out to people that you know and care about that are gonna be recruitable soon. All right. Okay, thank and you. So, so oh what, what's a good Final thought, what, what's a good age for someone to first start signing up for that? What's ideal? The earliest you can do is 13. I would say sometime freshman year, sophomore year would be good. So you can get a jump start. Heavy recruiting starts junior year. But if you can get a little head start on things, it's one membership, but one price. You might as well start early. You're going to get more bang for your buck. Yeah, and more education. 
More education. So, Always education. Awesome. Yes. All right. Well, it's 730, so we have a hard stop. So have a great day. Thanks Thank for you. watching, everybody. Thanks for having me. All right. Bye-bye.